play, you know, I think when you look at, you know, we didn't sell it well enough, I think, at the end of the day. Um, you know, the corner was able to peel off, and, uh, you know, we were just a little too quick. you got to do a good job of selling those plays if you want to make it. And, um, you know, again, it's, it's uh, you know, the execution thing. You can't, you know, it's just like I just told the players coming out of the locker room. I mean, from an effort standpoint, I mean, they've given everything they have. And, you know, from a point of execution and, and, and being consistent down in and down out, that's what we've got to do a better job. Uh, everyone. I yeah. mean, we all have to do. It. And with that young team, I mean, losing four in a row. I mean, you got to keep their spirits up, keep them working. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I, I'm not worried about this team. This team's going to continue to work hard, and you know, we just got to. We've got to get a win. I mean, that's the one thing we've got to do. And you know, there's only one way to do it, and you got to go out there and work. We're going to work, and and you know, get our guys out there, and they just got to keep playing the way they're playing. But we just got to play smarter and more consistent, and then take advantage of the opportunities when they present themselves. Doug, I, I know that uh, your focus has been on the game. The reports are is that the league may be moving your bye week, and, and we've talked before about how this is a year in which, hey, things are just never going to be the same. This may be one of those instances for your football team, might it might it be? Yeah, I think, I think you know, that's a great possibility that they may move the game and switch our bye weeks. And, you know, like I said before, if they do that, we'll be ready. I mean, it's, it's a, a year of change, so we're, we're prepared for it. All right, thank you, Doug. All right, thank you, Jeff. All right, the first word with head coach Doug Marone presented by Navy Mutual, ensuring those who serve. And it is official, by the way. The league has moved the Jaguars by week. They've moved the Chargers-Jaguars game from week eight to week seven. The bye week moves now from week seven to week eight. That was announced uh, a little earlier during the game today. Let's come back in a moment. Uh, Jeff Logman. Yes, I got okay. you. All right, we'll go ahead and get started with Jamal and then Mia. Hey, Coach. Uh, obviously not the game you wanted. Uh, James Robinson, 13 carries. Uh, did you hope to be able to get him more involved than that and have a better, I guess, uh, balance on offense? I mean, we, we felt like we had a good plan going in. There's some things that we wanted to take advantage of. So I think when every time you lose a game, it's always going to be questioning, you know, um, you know, how many times so-and-so got the ball or what you did. So, um, again, whatever we did wasn't obviously good enough. So uh, I acknowledge that. And, and the fourth and one play with the halfback pass. Uh, do you, looking back on it, I know hindsight's twenty twenty, but do you wish you just handed that ball off and tried to power forward for that one yard? Well, I mean, we worked on that play a bunch. I mean, you know, you work on things in certain situations. I think that we felt very comfortable with it. I don't think we did a good job executing it. I don't think we sold it well enough because uh, the corner was able to get off on it. So, um, you know, you work on something during the week, you feel comfortable about it, you know when you're going to call it in this, that situation, and we just didn't execute it. So uh, to ask your question, if, if I had to go back and know when it wasn't going to work, would I would I rather run something else? Obviously I would, but that's what we worked on, and that's what we were, you know, preparing for. Thanks, Coach. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Jamal. Let's go to Mia and then Hayes. Hey, Doug. Obviously, Hauschka misses those two kicks in the second quarter. What was your conversation with him at halftime, and what is the game plan moving forward? Well, I was just going to make sure I, I just was with the, you know, with the team. I think that, you know, our guys are playing extremely hard. We weren't able to take advantage of, you know, it's a certain sequence of, you know, the two turnovers where we weren't able to get, you know, the momentum back on our side or, or turn them into, you know, points or touchdowns. And then I thought Cole's big return out to the 39-yard line, with the way we're moving the ball, we should have gotten into range to, to be able to score, and we had two negative plays. So, you know, there's, there's opportunities out there that we didn't take advantage of, and that's why, you know, we came out with the loss. But as far as the kicking game goes, I mean, where do you guys go from here in terms of the kicking game? I, don't know, I think we'll we'll figure that out as 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 we go. I mean, obviously, it's it's you know with the way the ball was being kicked, it's it's you know it just doesn't have any. You know, he said he just didn't have any pop. You know, what I'm saying in his leg. Thanks, Doug. Yep. Thanks, Mia. Let's go to Hayes and then Gene and then Gary. Doug, how'd you feel like Gardner played today? I think at the end of the day, I mean, you know, you talk about individual guys. Um, you know, I'm sure that Gardner wishes, you know, he had some plays back and was able to, you know, you know, make some more plays for us to win. I think whenever you get, you know, those questions and you lost, I mean, um, obviously everyone, you know, including myself, we want to get, we want to get more. So I think it's difficult. I think, you know, um, you know, at the end he was throwing there and, um, you know, I think he was, you know, 31 for 44. And, so, you know, he had two touchdowns, didn't have any interceptions, had the fumble, you know, got hit from behind uh, trying to make a play. So, 
you know, that's always difficult. So, you know, he's doing everything he can. Um, you know, we just got to, you know, execute better. And what'd you see out of Sidney Jones? I saw the two past defenders. I was excited about it. I think, you know, he had an opportunity, came in and, and did some good things. So, you know, we'll go back and look at it. I think, you know, he's a guy that, that came in here and, you know, he's been bouncing around a little bit and he's worked really hard. And, you know, I was happy to see him. I mean, he almost got the pick on the one. You know, they went to undercut it, got his hand on the football. But I think it was good to see him out there. And I think that he's someone that can, you know, help us down the road now. Great. Thanks. Yep. Thanks, Hayes. Gene, let's go to you and then Gary. Uh, hey, Doug. Um, you said earlier with regard to uh, not, you know, and talking about James Robinson and his kind of lack of carries today, he only had 13 that there were other things that you wanted to try to take advantage of it. Of What was that, especially, uh, I think it's a fair question, given that the Texans were last in the league in run defense. Yeah, I think that we wanted to, you know, go after certain people. We wanted to make sure that, you know, we can, um, you know, score touchdowns. We want to be able to push the ball down the field. We wanted to, um, you know, we thought we'd be able to, you know, do a better job, um, you know, converting a lot of those things. So. Um, I mean, those, those are the reasons. I mean, we go into a weak game plan and I mean, we can't really predict, um, you know, we felt that it was going to give us the best opportunity. I mean, to go in there and, you know, we felt like we were going to have to score and we did not And I think the game plan that we were trying to put together was, you know, to be aggressive and push the ball down the field and, you know, score points. You know, we felt coming in with, you know, a lot of the, you know, the defensive players out, um, you know, we thought we wanted to get a game plan where, you know, we could score. And I mean, that's that's as simple as it is. I think, you know, that, that's what we were playing and we didn't execute it. I think uh, that's a fair answer. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Gene. Let's go to Gary and then John Shipley. Doug, you guys got a pretty good pressure on Deshaun. I mean, it, you know, it's hard for anybody to catch him. He does the same thing to almost anybody. But talk about you did make him work a little bit. You did get him on the run and 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 comment on Dwan Smoot in that regard and how he played. Yeah, I think overall, I think all those guys. I think you know, you know, there's been a lot of pressure on us to get to the quarterback. I think that we changed a lot of things up today. You know, we mixed some things up. We were able to get some pressure, get him off the spot. You know, it's always difficult to get him down. You know, I think you know a lot of times when we were pressuring or you know a man, I think. You know, they had they had a, a, a good matchup, you know, um, you know, I think Brandon Cooks had a big game and, um, you know, they were able he was able to find them, uh, you know, and, and, and be and go to him and the guy made plays. So, um, you know, it's one of those things where I think all those guys up front were, were busting their butt effort wise, not just uh, smooth and, you know, really trying to get it get into the game, trying to get pressure, trying to stop the run, you know, these things that, um, you know, we ask of them. So, you know, at the end of the day, they you know, they were able to make, make the plays and, you know, we weren't able to, I thought the effort though, um, was, was good. It's just, um, you know, we've got to get, you know, got to get it right, you know, play in and play out and be able to win some of those matchups, which we did a couple, but not as much as we need to, to win the game. Thanks coach. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to John Shipley and then John Reed. Hey coach, you, uh, you talked a little bit about margin of error last week. Uh, how much does it hurt a team when you guys aren't able to score off of turnovers and a play like Keelan Cole's long kick return? Yeah, I think, I mean, that was a, a key to the game, you know, not being able to take advantage of the turnovers or the kickoff return. Um, like I said before, with, with Gene's question or the running back question, you know, we were planning to come in here and, and thinking that we, we were going to have to score points with the, you know, the injuries that we had on defense. So that's the plan that, you know, we, we tried to put together and, uh, obviously, it didn't work well, but you know that that's what I'm talking about. Where you know we move the ball at times and look good, and then you have opportunities, and you need, you need to take advantage of it. Because if you don't take advantage of it, you know then then this is what happens. I mean, the swings in your way, and the momentum um, is always, is always tough to to capture. And you know when you have a time where you know you have the situations like we've had, especially you know after the, the turnovers or having the ball down there on uh, the two or three yard line. Um, you've got to, you've got to turn those into points and, you know, we weren't able to do that. So, um, that's on all of us. Thanks coach. Mm -hmm. Th thanks John. We've got time for two more. So let's do John Reed and Mark Long. I get this real quick. Uh, coach, can you just talk about just your inability to just get everything clicking on with the all three phases? And this is like the fourth game is that, that, you know, that has happened. 
Yeah, I think I think you know you get to a point where, um, you know you're basically pulling. You know, I'm pulling for these guys. I'm pulling for, um, you know, these these three phases to come together. And you know, we're working on that, and we talk about that. But, um, you know, we're not be we're not able to do that. You know, play in and, and play out right now. Um, you know, we're not able to. And it's not like we don't have opportunities. There's opportunities out there. We just haven't been able to take advantage of it. So, you know, we just got to, you know, work as a whole. I mean, and, and the reason why I say that, John, is because, you know, just like I told the team before I came in here, I mean, you know, the effort of how they're playing is I, I can't, I mean, I can't ask for more, you know, now we can play smarter and we can make some plays. Yes. You know, and these are the things that we've got to have to do and we have to go out and get ourselves a win because, you know, it's, it's, it stinks, you know, when we, we've lost, you know, now four in a row, you know, and the one thing about it is, is these guys work hard and, you know, they've got to learn to, to take advantage and we've got to learn to win some of these games and learn to, you know, get this momentum back in our favor. And, and these are the things that we have to do to, to win and we're not doing it right now. Thanks, yeah, Doug, the Josh Jones ejection, I was just curious, your thoughts on that. And then did you really, did you have an idea it was going to be a long day defensively when you're, you're playing without, you know, three of your top, top studs like that? Uh, the Josh Young things from, you know, the angle I have, I, I understand that. I mean, I don't, I don't argue that, that, that call. I mean, I think that's, you know, we're trying to protect players and player safety. So, you know, I'm, I'm behind that 100%. I don't think that Josh was malicious where he tried, you know what I'm saying, to do that. I think he was just trying to make a play and, you know, this, things happen and, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's probably the, the right call. I'm not having seen it in slow motion, but, uh, you know, beyond that, knowing that the, the players were, um, you know, not going to make it, you know, obviously you change, you know, what you try to get done. But I thought, you know, I thought early on, I think when they hit the big coverage, um, you know, we, we, you know, we had a, uh, a new starter in there that kind of missed it. And, um, you know, with the over route from the tight end, uh, that he should have been, you know, we want to be looking at that. So that gave up the, the touchdown, but, you know, they were playing hard and playing their butts off. So, um, you know, those are the kind of things that are, that are going to go on. I was just disappointed that we didn't take advantage of the opportunities that, you know, presented themselves in the game because, you know, we're not, we can't, we can't let those things go by. We have to be able to take advantage of it because like you said, I mean, you know, we, we don't have a, a large, um, you know, margin or, or anything of that nature, you know, it's not like we have to play perfect. I'm not saying that, but we've got to play, you know, better than we are. All right. Thanks, Mark. And thanks, coach. Appreciate your time. All right. Thank you. All right, guys, we're going to get everyone else organized quickly. David will take over and handle it from here. Just a little bit to join us as well. Time now for the Geico Fantasy Standouts from today's game. Saving you money on car insurance has been in Geico's playbook for over 75 years, so what are you waiting for? After the game, get a quote at geico.com. How about a few fantasy standouts from the game today? Sure, uh, JP. We'll take a gander uh, today. Deshaun Watson, three touchdowns passing. He does have the two interceptions, but they're pretty much offset there. Uh, he also uh, chipped in with 20 uh, five rushing yards to go with 359 through the air. So you got you around 30 fantasy points today in a typical league. And Brandon Cooks, eight catches for 161 yards with a touchdown led the way. That is a big day, another 30-point day. Uh, David Johnson, the 96 yards on that side of things. LaVisca Chenault got you about 14 to 15, depending on how your scoring system works, seven for 79. If you're into that decimal scoring, it'll get you that extra .9. Uh, today, uh, Gardner Minshew top 300 yards with a couple of touchdowns. So you know you're looking at uh, something in the low to mid 20s for Gardner, uh, which is not bad. You know, uh, and be considering where uh, fantasy owners drafted him this year, or just picked him up off the waiver wire. Although you know a 20 point game used to be kind of the standard in fantasy leagues for a quarterback. Like, hey, if I get 20, I'm hanging in with the rest of the crowd. Not anymore. Uh, now it's uh, like really you, you got to be. 25 is kind of like the, the minimum, and uh, 30 is becoming commonplace. We're seeing it all over the National Football League. So those are your main guys. Uh, you know, Darren Fells with the touchdown early. Will Fuller got one, so he salvaged a decent day uh, for you. If you ended up playing Fuller, you got about 15 points out of him today in point per reception league. So uh, overall, really, Deshaun Watson, Brandon Cooks are your two main guys that you wanted to have in your lineup today. Uh, James Robinson was solid, uh, you know, did some work in the passing game. 
gotten seven points there, but overall just about a dozen on the day. Not what you're looking for going up against the worst run defense in the National Football League. There you have it. A look at the Geico Fantasy standouts from today's game. The uh, the quarterback play today, we, we had heard a lot about Deshaun Watson and his ability to – to tuck it and run and do all that stuff today. And he didn't do a lot of that. Two carries, 25 yards, but threw the ball 20, uh, 35 times, 25 completions, 359, three touchdowns, two picks. How about the day for Deshaun? And the, the Jags defense, I felt early in this game, uh, managed it well, certainly considering all the pieces missing. They, they had the busted coverage on the Fells touchdown that went for 44 yards. Other than that, really, Watson didn't do much at all in the first half, and he's clearly trying. You hear me all right? Yep. Um, let's start with Gary Smith, and then we'll go over to Jamal. Gardner, uh, it's hard, it was hard to see from TV, but what were they doing specifically to take DJ away from you this, today? Um, I don't know. I don't know if it was necessarily – more about what they did or more about what we didn't do. Um, we got to have more of an effort to get him involved in the game early uh, and keep him involved. Um, you know, so I think that's not as much, you know, I think anytime you have something like this, you have to look more inward than outward. And then uh, from the plays that LaVisca and Colin made, pretty confident that these guys with their physical skills, is there a catch they can't make? Colin with the leaping one of the end zone, LaVisca went up high. Uh, is, it, is it just fun to play with guys as talented? Yeah, they're great um, and getting better. You know, the only ones they don't catch are the ones I throw bad. So um, I'm going to keep throwing it to them, give them chances, and uh, I think they're going to keep making plays. All right, thank you. Thank you, Gary. We'll go over to Jamal and then to Mia O'Brien. Hey, Gardner, fourth loss in a row. You guys are in last place in the AFC South now. How do you guys get this thing turned around? Yeah, I don't know. Um, that's, a, that's a great question. It's something we ask ourselves every week. Um, you know, we're going to have to go in and look at the film. I know it's a broken record, and trust me, we feel the same. Um, but, I mean, we, gotta, we just got to look in the mirror, reevaluate, and just find a way to win. Uh, and how much of a hit to the momentum you guys had going early were those missed field goals? Did it just feel like, I mean, you know, it took all, everything you guys had moving forward out of you at that point? Well, I mean, the only reason we're kicking those field goals is because we didn't execute in the, in, in the red zone, you know. So that's – that's more on us and um, as an offense and special teams. So, you know, anytime, you know, we, we want to be one of the best in the league in the red zone, and, you know, we got to earn that week in, week out. Um, and we didn't do that today. Thanks, Gardner. Thanks, Jamal. We'll go to Mia O'Brien and then John Shipley. Hey, Gardner, I know all four losses have come in different factors. But is there one thing that you see as a trend through those four losses that needs to be fixed? Um, I don't know. Um, that, that's a good question. We were actually just talking about that in the locker room, trying to figure out, you know, what it is, what's missing. Because, um, you know, we have moments where we feel really good about it, moments that it just all goes to shit kind of, and we just got to figure out how to, you know, be more consistent um, and, you know, keep moving forward. And I know you were also an advocate of trying to get James the ball more, more running game. At what point do you think you guys kind of got away from that in that he only had, I believe it was 13 carries today? Yeah, I don't know. Um, you know, that's going to be a thing. We're going to have to look back at the film. Uh, I think he did a good job catching the ball today. Um, yeah, that's another way. Just, you know, touches in general are good. Um, but, yeah, we ran the ball well early. And, uh, you know, we just got to capitalize on that momentum. Awesome. Thanks, Gardner. Thanks, Mia. We're going to go over to John Shipley, and then we'll wrap up with Gene Fournette. Hey, Gardner, can you just talk about the frustration when the offense isn't able to capitalize off of some of the turnovers today or Keelan's uh, long kick return? Yeah. Um, you know, we couldn't ask much more of what the defense did today. You know, they gave us opportunities with short field, and, um, you know, we wasted it. Uh, so we got we to gotta do better in that uh, sense, you know. There's no, um, you know, there's no point in fingers anywhere else but ourselves. Thanks, Gardner. Thanks, John. We'll wrap up with Gene Fournette. Uh, hey, Gardner. Um, is there a concern on your part that this young team, now that you're, you're in this losing streak, uh, that, it, that it's really going to struggle to learn how to win? You know, it's one thing to come out of the gate. You get the win uh, first week. Now you've got four. Now you've got some adversity hitting you. Uh, any concerns about 
that this team will struggle to learn how to win in, in clutch moments during the game. Yeah, I don't know. Um, you know, we definitely have concerns all over the place, but, you know, I believe in the guys that we have. Um, I believe that we're all, you know, on the same page. You know, everybody's fighting their tail off. Like, effort's not an issue. Like, we, we just got to, you know, pinpoint what exactly is going wrong, uh, keep putting that same effort forward, and uh, address those issues. Thank you. Thank you, Gardner. Right, thanks, guys. Uh, right page. And then Sydney, he really came up big. Uh, glad to see when he got his opportunity, he really showed who he, who we already knew he was before he got here when he was with the Eagles still. Uh, Deshaun Watson had been pretty quiet so far this year. And in today's game, had a couple of interceptions that we just talked about, but uh, had a pretty strong finish this ball game. He, he certainly won heck of a challenge for any defense. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's been like that ever since he got into the league. Uh, but, you know, sometimes we come up against him, we find a way to contain him to give, our chance to give ourselves a chance to win the game, and we just didn't do that today. I felt like uh, we put a pretty good pressure on him. You know, it's always going to be difficult to contain a great player like him, but we always got to be up to the task as a D-line, and then we just got to make sure we defend on the back end so they can help us get sacks so we can help them get interceptions by putting pressure on them. Yeah, and Avery, uh, four in a row you guys have lost, and, and young team or not, it's, it's never easy going through a losing streak like that, and you're one of the veteran guys. You're wearing a C. Uh, what do you say to your young team? Mm, I just keep it real with them. I mean, these all, like you said, it's a young team, uh, great talent on this team. I hope they all have a great, successful future. But, you know, some point in time when you're in this league, you realize this isn't just, you know, we kid around and say it's a, we're getting paid to play a kid's game, but it's a grown man out here. And you got to realize when you're tired of losing. Right. Uh so, I mean, that's why I just really try to give it to them. It's like, you know, you just can't wake up and say, we're going to play hard and get this dub. You know what I mean? It has to start early in the week. You have to eat, sleep, and breathe it. So, I mean, we're going to try to change our mentality in this locker room and on this team where just going through and playing hard and being right there is, is no longer enough. All right, Avery, I appreciate it. And uh, safe travels back to Jacksonville. All right, thank you. Y'all have a good one. Avery Jones in the Baptist Health locker room report. Baptist Health changing health care for good. Four consecutive losses for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Today, a 30-14 to loss to the Houston Texans. Back in a moment, highlights from this game. And Fred Taylor will join us as well. Proud of the Jaguars running back. And this is Jaguars postgame on Jaguars Radio. Yes. Oh, go oh, fuck. Um, let's start with Demetrius, and then we'll go over to Gary Smith. Hey, Abri, um, what did you sort of see from your defense today, able to sort of overcome some adversity, missing four key players, maybe five if you account for Jones? Um, I just saw guys that, you know, finally got a chance to, young guys, to, you know, live out their NFL dreams. Um, it's one of the biggest cliches, you know, out there in the league. You know, when one man goes down, it's always up to the next man up. And, you know, some guys came out here and made some plays when they got their first chance to start and things like that. But we just got to bring it all together as a collective. I know that you guys still gave up 30 points, but if you consider just where the defense was at hitting into this week and then you see how, how they played today or how you guys played today, do you think that this could be a time where – momentum can start building for you guys to play better and better each week? I mean, momentum can always take you, um, you know, pretty far and things like that. But I think as a defense, we need to understand to gain that momentum, we have to make the plays. And um, that's one of the things, you know, me and other captains on the team are trying to stress is that we got to go out there and make those plays because momentum just, just doesn't happen. We can't go out there and, you know, hope for a bad call or, hope for them to penalize themselves. So, I mean, we can gain the momentum. I definitely believe that. I feel like if we eliminate the explosives, we'll be a whole better defense. Thank you. Thanks, Demetrius. We'll go to Gary Smith and then over to Cole Pepper. Uh, Avery, you got you guys got pressure on Deshaun an awful lot today. He, he's he's just extremely elusive. Uh, do you feel like do you feel satisfied you flushed him out of the pocket? enough times or had enough opportunities? Um, 
I mean, it felt good to see him get flushed and things like that, but, you know, you definitely always want to get him down or at least affect him enough where he gets off a bad throw. I mean, ever since he's gotten to the league, he's been one of the best ones uh, uh, escaping out of the pocket, but I was happy to see the pressure we put on him. I think uh, that's one of the things that we've been stressing inside the building where we've been pretty close. We just got to keep grinding. And we're going to finally get him. Uh, I think we showed that today, and then we just got to keep building. I mean, once we start getting the sack numbers up, I think, you know, it'll be a real big positive for us. And from your vantage point, how how did how did Dewan play today? Say again, please. From your vantage point, how well did Dewan Smoot play today? Oh, smooth, smooth, smooth. Oh, yeah, smooth, definitely. He's showing up big. I mean, he's a guy that had limited reps last year and made the best of it, and now he's getting back in the swing of things, and he's trying to try his best to ball. He's showing up and pass versus run. He's always been a versatile guy like that. I'm glad to see, you know, he's starting to put up results. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Gary. We'll go to Cole Pepper and then Mike Duraco. Avery, uh, one and four where you are at this point, not what you wanted to be. Um, how does it change the way you guys go about things now with, uh, you know, the odds of being able to make something out of the season dwindling? Um, I mean, to us, you know, we're trying to keep positive mindset. Letting it be known it's still kind of early. Um, but, you know, we can't really hide the fact this was a big one. It was a division one. No matter how bad the record is, we can kind of fight through the division. But really, it has to be a more intense focus. Um, I don't want to stress nobody out, go out there, yelling and pointing fingers and things like that because I know how hard this game is and I know how hard um, our guys are trying. So really just kind of have to talk to them, talk especially the young guys and tell them the focus needs to be more and then have to go and talk to the vets to let them know, like, if you've been here for a couple of years, we got to step up and make those plays. I mean, when it comes down to crunch time, uh, we're the ones that have to make plays to kind of inspire the team, inspire the defense, and really just lead these guys in the right direction of where we want to go. Thank you, Cole. We'll go to D-Rock, and then we'll wrap with Mio O'Brien. Hey, Avery. Uh, Gardner was just in here a little bit ago, and it, it doesn't sound like he has answers for the stuff that's going wrong. He said, I, I don't know, a bunch of times. Is that the general feeling around the locker room, the team, you think that people just really don't have any idea why everything's going wrong the way it is? Mm, I don't know. Personally, that's not my mindset. My mindset is if it's wrong, the only way to go out there and fix it is go to practice, watch film, and come out on Sunday and produce results. I mean, until you produce results, they're continuously going to tell you you're not doing nothing. So, I mean, that's just been my experience. Uh, he was probably just talking. He doesn't know. You know, he hasn't watched the game film yet today. So I don't know if he's talking overseas on just this past game, but when it comes down to it, we just got to go out there and execute. I mean, we go out there, we get get the stops we got to make, score when we need to score, and we'll be all right. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, d -Rock. We'll wrap with Mio O'Brien. Hey, Avery, just curious, how much was it an emphasis on the run for you guys after last week with Joe Mixon, and how would you evaluate the growth there? Uh, well, I mean, I feel like the run has been a topic, a subject for us, you know, dating all the way back to last year. And then uh, going into this week, uh, based on all the Cincinnati, the thing that really we're trying to uh, focus on is making sure every guy's in that gap. Uh, I felt like we did a great job, you know, last week. It was just happened when he cuts it back, people aren't in the gaps where they need to be, and every man has a job. And I think we see when every man does his job correctly, comes downhill and, you know, puts some pads behind himself and uh, go down and make a play, we, you know, we do all right. Thank you, Avery. Yep. And we'll have Jared Wilson with us very shortly. Down to the six-yard line, settled for a field goal from Hauschka, who missed it from 24 yards away. JW, you got me? Yes, sir. What's up, bro? What's up, man? Uh, we'll start with Gene Fournette, and then we'll go to Mio O'Brien. Uh, hey, Jared. What's up, man? Gene, I think you put yourself back on mute. It's a four Can you hear me now? Yep, yeah, we got it's a four game losing streak now. You've, you've lost these games in different ways, obviously. Uh, any concern on your part because, you know, things have been sliding here lately 
that there's a struggle right now for this young team to learn to get back and learn how to win. Um, well, obviously we've only won one game, and that was the first one of the year. So we just gotta find a way. We've been in every ball game. Um, there hasn't been a football game that well. Miami may be uh, a little bit different, but as far as the uh, last couple games, really we've been in the ball game. It comes down to a couple possessions. So it's really just execution, man, and being on the details of everything. Um, as far as effort, I think guys are showing up on Sunday ready to play. Just really trying to find that way to come out with a W at the end of the day. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Gene. We'll go to Cassidy, and then we'll go to John Shipley. Hey, Jared. How you doing? Uh, first, good. How are you? I'm good. Just how did it feel to get back out there for starters and especially on that interception return? It felt pretty good to be back out there. Um, just be with the guys, be with the te- be with my teammates. Um, been really working really hard, just trying to rehab and get my hamstring as best as possible for the team. And uh, yeah, the interception was cool, but we caught we we took a le- uh, L. So I mean, kudos to me catching the interception, but I, I would rather take a W any day over an interception. And then, as you said, the only win was week one. Three losses while you were gone, or including today. What can you bring back to this defense now that you are back out there? I mean, guys are playing fast and with a lot of effort. So I'm really just coming in trying to do my job as best as I can. Um, I just see myself as a piece of the, the, the defense as a whole. I'm not really trying to go out there and be Superman, but I'm just going to do my job. So basically just trying to be that leader in the back end, obviously with um, being the oldest guy in the room. But besides that, just kind of doing my job. Thank you, Cassidy. We'll go to John Shipley, and then we'll wrap up with Dustin Fletcher. Hey, uh, Jared, can you just talk a little bit about, you know, uh, on your interception, Sidney Jones made a really good play on the ball. Can you just talk a little bit about uh, his performance today? Yeah, Sid had a really good game today. Um, He came to play um, really big physical corner. You know, um, just not being on the team for about a month now. You know, he really wasn't with us during the uh, training camp and everything, but had an amazing game, got his hands on a couple footballs, and uh, definitely contributed to us having those both turnovers on defense. So um, he had a really good game. Thanks, Jared. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you, John. We'll wrap up with Dustin Fletcher. Hey, Jared. How are you doing today? I'm good. How you doing? I'm doing all right. No complaints here. Uh, how did you think your play was today after being laid off for probably three or four weeks now? Um, how did you feel you played, and is there anything you could have done better? Yeah, it's always things that, that I could clean up. I really have to take a look at the film. I could tell you just a couple things, you know. Having been out there for a couple of weeks is definitely different, you know, as far as, like, football shape and things of that nature. So um, really just kind of knocking some cogwebs off for me, you know. I kind of had sat down for a month. So just trying to get back into the groove of things and, getting a rhythm with my uh, teammates. All right. Thank you, Jared. You're welcome. Thank you, Jared. Yep. Thank you all. Um, that's all we'll have. We'll send out post-game notes here soon if you all need them. Later, the Jags Radio Network player of the game voting. This is Jaguars post-game on the Jaguars Radio Network. Jaguars fans, whether it's on the field or in your finances, the key to success is a solid plan. From high-yield banking to home lending, into retirement and beyond, TIAA Bank offers solutions that can help you achieve your goals and make the most of your money. It's time for a plan. Start building your legacy today at TIAABank.com slash Jaguars. TIAA Bank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC, equal housing lender and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Proven IT implements a strategic game plan designed to streamline your business for maximum results. Make the winning choice with the official business systems partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, Proven IT. Proven IT's technology experts use a customized approach to understand how to design, implement, and monitor solutions that optimize your business. Proven IT provides managed network services, document management solutions, office technology, voice and data solutions, and more. Visit ProvenIT.com to see how they can streamline your business. Proven IT, transforming workplace productivity. Any repeated physical activity puts stress on the body. Checking your phone, getting in the car, sitting at your desk, checking the phone, getting in your car, sitting at your desk, checking your phone for the 50th time today. 
If you do anything with regularity, you should get massaged with regularity. Massage Envy. Keep your body working. Regular body work makes the body work with massage, skin care, and stretch. Come in today for more information or visit MassageEnvy.com for more details. Some things make a house your home. Like clean, fresh sheets that make a bed with the soothing scent of fabric softener your thing. When drying clothes with natural gas, you get faster, gentler drying times, save money, and earn a rebate up to $150. Your home. Our safe, reliable, efficient energy. Love natural gas. Find rebate details at peoplesgas.com. Welcome back. Jaguars postgame continues after a Jaguars loss in week 5, 30-14, the final. Texans over the Jaguars, J.P. Shadrick, Mike Dempsey, Fred Taylor with us. Let's get to the TIAA Bank stats check, Fred. Let's start off with the team stats from today's game. And uh, as we get there, and let's start with the first downs. Houston led the way in first downs, 24-22. to The Jags led this at the halfway point in this game. Third downs, Jags 50%, 8 of 16. Houston, 50%, 5 of 10. Total yardage, Houston went for 486 yards in the game, a lot of that in the second half. Uh, Jags went for 364 today. Rushing net, 129 for Houston, 75 for the Jags. Passing net, 357 for Houston, 289 for Jacksonville. Penalties, 4 for 35 yards on the Jags, 5 for 25 yards on Houston. Each team had two turnovers in the game. The Jaguars had... Zero points off those turnovers. And the time of possession in favor of the Jags, 31 minutes, 59 seconds. Just not enough, though, to keep Deshaun Watson over there sipping Gatorade. No, and uh, the result was he completed 25 out of 35 for 359 and three touchdowns. He was intercepted twice today, also scrambled twice for 25 yards. Uh, on the other side, Gardner Minshew, 31 of 49 for 301. Two touchdowns, no interceptions in the battle of quarterback rating. Deshaun Watson, 109 to Gardner's 94 on the ground. David Johnson led the way with 96 yards on 17 carries. That's good for a 5.6 yard per carry clip. Uh, give some credit to the Houston run defense, which was abysmal coming in. They held James Robinson to 3.7 yards per carry, 13 for 48 there. Gardner Minshew scrambled four times for 18 yards. Chris Thompson a couple carries uh, for seven. Uh, in the receiving game, we talked about him earlier, J.P. Brandon Cooks dominated with eight for 161 and a touch average over 20 yards a catch, as did Darren Fells. Good thing Fells only caught the two balls, though. One went for a 44-yard touchdown. Will Fuller also chipped in with four for 58 and a score. So there are your three touchdowns uh, for Houston. LaVisca Chenault continues to grow week by week right before our eyes. Eight targets, seven catches, 79 yards with a long of 25 today. Chris Connolly had two for 58. Chris Thompson, three for 35 out of the backfield. And Colin Johnson, three for 30 with a touchdown. Keelan Cole also chipping in with a touchdown on two catches for 25 yards. Defensively for the Jags, Daniel Thomas pressed into duty wow. today as uh, Josh Jones got ejected from this football game. Uh, Andrew Wingard went out early with an injury. Thomas had seven solo tackles, which led the way. Dakota Allen had seven uh, total, five solos, including a tackle for loss and a quarterback hit. And let's give a tip of the cap to Dewan Smoot. I thought the one guy who had some consistent pressure today, he had the only sack uh, for or one of the, the, yeah, the only sack for the Jaguars, excuse me, Correct. and uh, had three out of four quarterback hits that the Jags defense produced yeah, today. Good day at the office yeah. for him defensively. That's good news. Hey, Fred, on, on this offensive side, uh, Mike mentioned Chenault. Eight targets, seven catches, 79 yards, and he rarely goes to the ground after he makes the catch. And we just kind of see him continue to, to thrive. And, you know, he didn't touch the ball on the ground today, you know, in the running game. But uh, he's a guy that uh, seems like Gardner can lean on a little bit if he has to. You know, it, the, the the best thing about uh, these guys that are out there, J.P. and Mike, <laughs> they're rookies. You know, it's a lot of upside out there. You know, God forbid any uh, severe injuries down the road. But these guys, they, they really look like players, which means that they'll give an opportunity for the Jaguars to be successful down the road. Uh, you know, he's a strong guy. I love those guys that catch the ball. Uh, but I love them even more if they can run after the catch, man. It's just something about those guys when they light up and can make things happen and take it a distance, uh, much like the Rams back in the day. 
I, I just want to say quickly, though, man, just when I was charting my numbers, uh, James Robinson, you know, I, I think this offense is getting a bit more pass happy, something that I don't necessarily agree with. Uh, I'm looking at their first down success. Now, I was charting first down runs here, Robinson, at the beginning of the game. And the same thing a week ago, 11-yard run on the beginning of the game. And then you go pass, pass, sack, punt. I don't understand it. He had an 11-yard run out the gate. Uh, and then the next series, the next position they take the ball, you know, he goes four yards, which is run game efficiency, four yards is a win. Sure. He goes four yards on, on first down, second and six, and now they execute the six because of the penalty. Then he gets second and one. He gets another four yards. Then first down again, he gets 14. And then no gain, you go pass, pass, punt again. I think the Jaguars, what they need to do is, and it's tough because you don't know what you're going to get from the defense, uh, but you have a running back out there. He, he's having great positive yards on first down. You know, give it an opportunity again on second down or create some opportunities where you're going to call some play actions or, or something, but things aren't just adding up. They're not adding up for me, as I can see it. Five carries in the first quarter, three in the second quarter, four in the third quarter, and one carry in the fourth quarter. Obviously, you you were down. But uh, you have a guy who's going to eventually be a future workhorse. you got to find a way to implement him, create plays by design that go with your mobile quarterback to give the running game a chance. you got a strong-legged punter. Give him a chance. In defense, you got to step up to the task. But they got to go back and look at the film and see how successful they've been on first down and figure out what they can do better. All right, let's come back in a moment, guys, and we'll pick the Jaguars Radio Network player of the game. Final score, Texans 30, Jaguars 14. More with Mike Dempsey and Fred Taylor in just a moment. It's Jaguars post game on Jaguars Radio. At Jacksonville International Airport, the health and safety of travelers is their number one priority. They're doing everything they can to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. From adhering to CDC cleaning guidelines, requiring facial coverings in the terminal, and encouraging social distancing at every point of the airport experience. For a comprehensive look at what the airport, airlines, and their shops, restaurants, and rental cars are doing to keep passengers safe, please visit jacksairportcares.com to learn more. At ViStar, we believe in better. And that means treating people better with friendly, personal service that's kept our members happy since 1952. A smile and personal greeting when you enter the branch, an online or phone chat for those quick questions, and a call center that's open every day. If you believe that great service is better, join ViStar. We never forget that it's your money. All loans subject to approval, insured by NCUA. You're working from home. So how do you connect with coworkers and clients? With Ring Central, the number one global communication solution for business. Ring Central makes talking, texting, collaborating, and video calls easy. And it's all on one platform. And when we say everyone should be connected, we mean it. It's why we're giving Ring Central free to educators, health providers, and nonprofits. Learn more at ringcentral.com. Welcome to the new Ring Central. Why live with foot or ankle pain? If you have persistent pain, numbness, tingling, burning pain on the bottom of your foot, or swelling that doesn't improve with home treatment, it may be time to see Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute. Our foot and ankle specialists have innovative new options to help you get back in the swing of things without persistent pain that slows you down. Call JOI 2000 or go to joionline.net for an appointment. Welcome back. Jaguars post game continues. Jaguars game day presented by Vistar Credit Union. If you believe free checking is better, join Vistar. That's checking with no fees and no minimums. No kidding. At Vistar, they never forget that it's your money. Time now for the Jaguars Radio Network player of the game voting. I get a vote. Mike gets a vote. Fred gets a vote and a half. I'll let one of you guys start off tonight. What do you What do you think? Well, let's say Fred because Fred's the the closer. 
right? He gets All the, right, the you vote. Know, I, I, I'm going to vote for Brandon Cooks. Oh, my, <laughs> my bad. Stop He's it. Wow. Team. Red Taylor, I cut dude. him. I cut him today. My, I cut him. I, I, I didn't think he was going to do what he did today. She, I, I hate I cut him, but I cut him. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with Sidney Jones, man. I I, I, lo- I love the fact that he was thrown out there and uh, what he did today. Uh, only three tackles, but the four pass defenses, uh, one interception, one pass defense led led to a uh, interception by um, uh, Jared Wilson. So I'm gonna go with Jones. I That's like that. One. That's a good call. It's a real good one. Uh, I'm going to go defense, too, here. And uh, we already talked about him a little bit. But uh, I, he, he was the one guy I noticed getting any pressure today, and the stats back it up. Dewan Smoot got called on today. No Josh Allen, so a uh, much more prominent role. He's not getting any help because th- there's no one to draw a double team that you have to, to feature out there. And uh, Dewan Smoot had the three quarterback hits today, had the lone yep. sack, and a couple of solo tackles. So uh, I'm going defense as well. And so we got Smoot, Ooh. we got Jones. Boy, it's a tough one. Where are you going there, JP? It's a tough one because Smoot caused one of the interceptions with his deflection of the pass. <laughs> but the interception was made on the back end. Uh, another interception because of Sidney Jones batting that ball in the mm-hmm. air. So I'm in a little bit of a conundrum here. This is, this is a tough one today. But I'm going to go, Mike, I think, with you because oh, with me. it has been an issue to get pass rush this entire year. Uh, and still, obviously, it was today. If Smoot got the only sack. They only had four quarterback hits, but Smoot got home three times with hits today. Uh, had a tackle for loss. So, uh, at, by the narrowest of margins, I'm going to give Dewan Smoot my vote. I thought you might have gone with Lavisca Chenault. Actually, I thought he, you know, yeah. if you're going to go with yeah. an offensive player, I thought he was the guy to go with. But today. this was a defensive story day Understood. because of all the players yeah. that were missing yep. in the lineup. I mean, yeah. they had to have some guys stand out today, Fred. They had yeah, to. no, I agree. I, I like that pick, man. The defense, they weren't responsible for the two missed field goals or the uh, two fumbles, 14 points that led to those turnovers. I mean, the, the, the 14 points off those turnovers. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, that, I, I like that pick, JP, just to try and keep it short. No, yeah. And, yeah, and and Jones is a, a fine pick, too. I mean, he, he and he's a guy that feels like could be, um, hey, keep him around and on here for a while. Oh, Play. absolutely. I mean, look. Big time pedigree, Fred, yeah. with uh, Sidney Jones. You know, sometimes yeah. it doesn't work out in your first stop, says Jimmy Smith, and then you find the right team, and you know your your career takes off. So I'd love to see that. But oh, I think we should at least mention the job Dakota Allen did today. Yep. I mean, Miles Jack went out last week. They ran right at Dakota Allen all afternoon long, and he had no answer. Right at today. Seven tackles, five of those solos, one behind the line of scrimmage, had a quarterback hit as well. I thought he played a solid football game. There you have it. So uh, the Jaguars Radio Network player of the game, though, Dewan Smoot, two tackles, a sack, the only Jag sack today. Uh, they've had one sack in every game so far this year. As a defense, the three quarterback hits of the four total for the Jags today. He's the Jaguars Radio Network player of the game. If you're looking for the MVP of the truck game, then look no further than Ford F-150. Loaded with impressive capability and designed to dominate work, play, and everything in between, this truck makes tough look easy. No wonder it's the official truck of the NFL and proud partner of your Jacksonville Jaguars. The Baptist Health Injury Report when we return. It's Jaguars postgame on Jaguars Radio. Why do you choose Farah and Farah? First, we have the financial resources to take on any insurance company. And our track record proves that we know how to win. Our attorneys and staff are a team, and we've worked together for decades. To us, our job is much more than just a paycheck. We love to help. And this is important. We never forget. It's not about us. It's all about you. Farah and Farah, Jacksonville. Slot right, blue 42, hot, hot. A great quarterback is a true leader with a work ethic that never wavers and a desire to win that is second to none. We know a truck like that. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling truck 43 years straight. With impressive towing and payload, Ford F-150 makes tough jobs look easy. Visit your local Ford dealer for great offers on F-150, official truck of the NFL. Based on 1977 to 2019 calendar year total sales. If something's been hurting, aching, or bothering you, don't ignore it any longer. It's time to take care of your health again. It's time to make an appointment with a Baptist Health primary care doctor or specialist. Call 904-202-4U 
to schedule a virtual visit or see a doctor in person at a Baptist Health location. The time for better health is here. Call 904-202, the number 4, Y-O-U, or visit GetBetterJacks.com. Jaguars fans, game day is back. And this year, we've teamed up with Jameson to add another win to your week with official Jaguars and Jameson branded collectible stadium cups. They're only available for a limited time in the Jacksonville metro area. So grab yours today for a smooth Jameson, ginger and lime, and cheer on the Jags with Jameson. Taste responsibly. Jameson Irish Whiskey. 40% alcohol by volume. 80 proof. Product of Ireland. Copyright 2020. Imported by John Jameson Import Company. New York, New York. Floridians know what it means to stand together. That's why Florida Blue is committed to the people of Florida by providing health care with lower costs and higher quality. Enroll within 60 days of life-changing events, such as losing your job, to get benefits like plans as low as $0 a month and up to $500 per year towards your premiums and wellness rewards. Call 1-800-750-0164 or visit floridablue.com slash care today. Florida Blue is a trade name of Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Florida Incorporated. These health benefit plans have limitations and exclusions. At Tropical Smoothie Cafe, one taste and you're getting refreshed now. Palm trees swaying now, letting loose now, busting a move now, cranking up the beats now, hands in the air now, feeling free now. You're on Tropic Time now. And right now at Tropical Smoothie Cafe, try our watermelon mojito and guava margarita smoothies. And you're tasting fruity now, sipping sunshine now, toasting summer now. You're on Tropic Time now at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Jaguars postgame continues. J.P. Shadrick with Mike Dempsey and Fred Taylor. Let's get to the injury report presented by Baptist Health, changing health care for good. Now, we know all the injury woes going into the game. A bunch of guys were held out and active today, including Miles Jack with an ankle issue, C.J. Henderson with his shoulder issue, uh, Josh Allen uh, suffered a knee injury last week and um, was held out of the game today, did not even travel this week. Those are just a few of the names. A few of the guys affected in the game today. Linder was evaluated for a concussion in the first quarter but cleared, came back in. Andrew Wingard with a core muscle issue in the second quarter left the game. Uh, Tyler Eifert with a neck issue and was questionable to return later. And then we saw DJ Chark limping off in the fourth quarter with an ankle injury. And uh, that's never a good sign for Chark, but... Um, we'll see the severity of that, I guess, when we move forward. Yeah, I mean, look, you'd hate to see him miss because we saw what the passing game looked like without him in there. So uh, hope for a speedy recovery from DJ. Uh, Fred, I was talking to Dr. Kevin Kaplan, the head team physician, this week. We do a pregame interview. And he said that last week was uh, probably the busiest stretch, most amount of injuries in a short period of time during a game that he can remember as a team physician. Just kept going out somebody else is down and that was the second half last week for this Jags team that's a that's a lot of injuries to deal with but uh, nobody's gonna feel sorry for you no no one's gonna feel sorry for you man it's the NFL uh you know I, I keep going back to you know what COVID has done to our entire world all of our sports is just a total disruption and and everything across the board across the spectrum uh not having the preseason we see how vital preseason is now you know, and again, I mentioned last week that there has been talk back, you know, um, in the CBA and leading up to the CBA about what they're going to do with the preseason. But it's evident that preseason is is, is so vital uh, in terms of just getting guys acclimated. Uh, the, the, they had already under the 2011 CBA taken away the amount of padded practices, and now you're going to make the game a lot more soft leading up to you know, week one of a season where you're expecting to go from zero to 150 miles an hour uh, with the added adrenaline on top of that. I don't think the body can tolerate it uh, from a soft tissue standpoint. And that a lot of those injuries lead to fatigue and a lot of the other injuries that we see with the knees, the ankles, all those other things, uh, ACLs, uh, ligament injuries. So it's tough, and I I believe him. I, he's a doc. He knows he he knows how often he goes out there. I totally believe him. They got to find a way to get guys in and and get guys out there and ready to play, regardless. 
And Fred, I think too, uh, you know, all the COVID stuff going on, uh, teams are going to have to be resilient and, and, you know, things are changing rapidly. We saw Melvin Gordon tweet out today, uh, like he couldn't believe that this turns out to be Denver's bye week and they had to practice all week because they thought they were playing a game. So they truly will not have a week off at any point in this season. We may look back and laugh and say, wow, that's one of the, the smallest inconveniences we've had because I think they had to move, JP, eight games today Yes, to reschedule Correct. the Denver-New England game. That's eight games, Fred, be, to make one game fit later on in the schedule without pushing it into an extra week. So if you have uh, multiple games in a given week, that have to be pushed uh, into the future. I think uh, all heck's going to break loose with this scheduling, man. Yeah, I mean they're, they're, they're still going to be able to find a way to get it done. I mean, if the if the if the networks are, are, are willing to, you know, accommodate. I mean, because you're you're ta- it, 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 this is a huge, huge business. It's a multi-billion-dollar business, and a lot of different moving pieces are involved, from sponsorships to you know the TV, the networks to the teams, the the local. Uh, um, the the local community is just so much involved, but if, if if people are willing to make you know uh, sacrifices, you know even if you have to push a game back a few days and another game back, they're going to find a way to get it done. I, I don't think they throw the entire season away. Uh, I think that would just I, I just don't see where that could happen because there's a lot of money involved, uh, Mike. Uh, they're going to find a way to make it happen. God forbid, a uh, hundred people, you know, and uh, uh, two hundred people uh, uh, get infected. I think that will be the only way they they close cap the season. But other than that, they'll find a way to get it done, man. And, and the players are going to play. The players are going to play as long as that they get proper rest. Uh, they can get out there and, and, and turn the corner. They're going to find a way to play. But it's going to be tricky. Uh, but I'm I'm a fan. I'm all for whatever they decide to do. All right, guys, let's come back in just a moment. Final thoughts, preview next week's game. The Jags fall their fourth consecutive loss today. 30-14 the final, Texans over the Jaguars. And it's Jaguars post game on the Jaguars radio network. The best thing about working at Fair and Farrah is all of the employees. We all work together. It's extremely enjoyable to come to work every day. There's a, um, a common cause or goal. No matter what your job is, we're all there for the client. We are dedicated to our clients 100%. We do everything it takes to maximize the value of their claims. Fair and Farrah is really the Fair family. When they choose us, they choose a family to fight for them and to protect them and to make sure that they're in a good place and that they have somebody on their side. Farrah and Farrah, here for you, here for good. Jacksonville. Hanania Subaru of Orange Park would like to present our new dealership with over 13 acres of vehicles to choose from and our new online buying program, iBuy. You decide how much of your buying experience you do online. Browsing, value your trade, picking your payments, financing. Just go to SubaruofOrangePark.com, pick out your vehicle, and click iBuy to begin. Become an iBuy preferred customer at Hanania Subaru of Orange Park, your local Subaru superstore. Pinpoint, the official signage partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, helps business decision makers like you maximize the impact of their brand. Your company's identification, advertising, and even the words you use make an impression on your clients. With Pinpoint as your coach, you can make sure it's a good impression. Pinpoint provides the creative design and production services for anything you need to enhance your brand, from custom signage to complete marketing solutions. Step up your game with Pinpoint and create the ultimate brand experience for your clients. Visit experiencepinpoint.com. Bold statement. Saving money with Geico is almost better than watching football. Think about it. When you're watching the game, yelling at the quarterback to throw the ball, throw it, Williams is wide open, why are you doing this to me? Use that rocket arm, come on! They don't listen to you. But if you went into a Geico office and yelled, someone please help me save some money on car insurance, everyone would hop to it. Except the intern, because it's his first day and he doesn't even have a computer yet. See? Better. Switch and save with Geico. It's almost better than sports. Welcome back to Jaguars Post Game. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Jaguars radio network. J.P. Shadrick, Mike Dempsey, Fred Taylor. In Jaguars postgame, Texans 30, Jaguars 14. The Jags next week, gentlemen, are back home. The Detroit Lions come calling. Matt Stafford and company. Well-rested. 
Yeah, right. Coming off a bye, right? They just got uh, Kenny Galladay back off of injury, and he's uh, over the last two games has played pretty well, gotten in the end zone uh, both times. They they hit you with Fred, three different running backs, the ageless Adrian Peterson, uh, the holdover Karrion Johnson, and uh, the new look DeAndre Swift, uh, who's been very involved in the passing game as well. Yeah, Mike, they're 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 not playing great, but they've been in a few close ones, a lot closer than the games we've been involved in. They beat actually two weeks ago. Uh, they beat the Cardinals, who've been playing pretty decent ball. They lost by six to the Saints uh, a, a week ago. As you mentioned, Mike, they're on a bye. They're going to be well rested. While we're a team that you know we're we're battling some injuries here, uh, it, it, it it could be another. It could be a lot more of what we you know have been seeing the past couple weeks. I just hope we don't finish first to the finish line with the Jets <laughs> to try to get the kid out of Clemson. Long way before we really start digging into the draft, Fred. It is. Hey, uh, man. <laughs> it is way. what it is, JP. It is right now what it is. Yes, I feel you. So the uh, Jags get the Lions next week. And then, uh, in case you've just joined us, the uh, league announced all those changes, as Mike, as you mentioned. The, the Jaguars' week eight game against the Chargers is now week seven, and the bye week moves from week seven to week eight. So next week, the Lions here, and then at the Chargers before a week eight bye for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yep, uh, and look, at, you know, I guess the one bright spot is uh, you don't have any people attending these games, right, because of COVID, so it's not like – people's entire plan you know uh, some people plan one road trip or you know, whatever around a, a certain game a certain week and uh, at least that's not as much of a factor uh, going forward but I, I not shocked at all if this is not the last time oh, that the Jags yeah. are impacted schedule oh, yeah. wise uh, it's get them all in while you can if you can play them play them and uh, hope for the best and they're, they're trying to do everything they can to play these within the 17 week structure because uh, Fred, if they get to the end of the season, they may need them uh, to, you know, if you're in December and you get a game that gets wiped out, you're going to need week 18 as a potential, uh, you know, fail safe to move that game. Uh, those playoff implication games are going to be very important to get in down the road. Oh, without a doubt, Mike. That's why, uh, again, you just you see you stack them as they come. Let's see how it all plays out, and we'll be able to get a brighter, a, a better picture you know, at the end of the year. You know, I just hope that with, with the NFL partners, you know, you look at DirecTV, the NFL package, people can't really move around. Maybe if you were a season ticket holder or something, maybe you can get a discount on the package or something, man, because, again, COVID has definitely done a number on everything that we've touched, you know, on this planet. Uh, but the guys are out there. They, they they look forward to planning each and every week. Hopefully the fans can appreciate that in the midst of, all the wildness and craziness that go that's going on with the shuffling of the schedule. Fred, good stuff as always. We will chat next week before the Jags and the Lions match up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to it, man. I wish I can go on the field and catch up with AP, man. Definitely respect the hell out of that guy. He's still getting at it. One of the greats, for I'm sure. I'm sure he feels the same way. Yeah, I'm sure it's a, a two-way right street there, for sure. Uh, Fred, we'll talk to you. All right, guys, y'all be good. Fred, Bye. Fred Taylor out of here, proud of the Jaguars running back. And for those on our flagship station, 1010XL, stick around. The scoreboard show is next. The phone lines will be open. 355-NFL1, the number 355-6351. Bucky Brooks will join us, NFL Network analyst as well. Senior VP of Communications is Dan Edwards. VP of Production is Patrick Cavanaugh. Executive producer, Dave DeCantis. Manager of Radio Joe Fortunato, Tony Smith and Linda Fortunato are our producers. Brent Reber, Trent Padilla, and Max Hockman produce our shows for Jaguars.com. For Jeff Lagerman, Fred Taylor, and Mike Dempsey, it's J.P. Shadrick saying good night. Final score, Texans 30, Jaguars 14 on the Jaguars Radio Network. is the Jaguar Scoreboard Show. This is your chance, Jaguars fans, to sound off about today's game. The Jaguar Scoreboard Show is brought to you by Baptist Health, Farah & Farah, Geico, and by TIAA Bank. The Jaguar Scoreboard Show starts right now.
Welcome into the scoreboard show. 355-NFL1, the number 355-6351. And if you're just joining us, 904 is the area code to yes, throw in is. front of that. And in case you've uh, just joined us here, welcome in. Uh, final score, Texans 30, Jaguars 14. J.P. Shadrick, Mike Dempsey, out to Bucky Brooks. He'll join us here in just a few minutes to uh, take some of your calls tonight. Oh, boy. There's uh, another loss, four in a row. Defense, I think, uh, you know, considering all of the frontline guys that were down, that's another issue altogether. I think they came out, and especially in the first half of the game, minus the 44-yard touchdown, as you had mentioned earlier, they held their own, I thought. Earlier in this game, then it got away from it. It's hard to look at the total yardage and say the defense That's, played well. I know, right? but uh, they give it but, 10 at halftime. No, no, no. I Granted, they're right. 13 at the end of the third quarter. Right. So, yes, I, I, I agree with you. But. With the exception <laughs> of the uh, the big touchdown of Fells, Watson could, didn't do much That's right. in that time period. You know, he had some yardage, but the, the Jags defense would, okay, you're moving the ball, we'll tighten up. Settle for field goals. They were making theirs. We weren't making ours. Uh, but still, throughout, and we were running short on time. We were talking with Fred Taylor about this specific thing about James Robinson's touches. How is it when it's been a topic of discussion, the offense quarter himself says we got to do a better job staying balanced, you're in this football game. It's a six-point game at the end of three, and you've missed two field goals. This, you were in this football game, and he had 12 carries through three quarters today. Uh, it's just not enough. And I get – and what Fred points out is you get these sequences like last week, JP. We had the last week, he had the big run, overturn on penalty. Yeah. And it's pass, 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 punt. Then the next series, it's pass, 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 punt. You had a couple of those occasions today where James Robinson's running well. All of a sudden, pass, 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 and we got to punt the ball. And uh, I, I don't – you know, look – Jay Gruden's much better at this than I am, I'm sure. But it just seems that they've got to be able to come up with a formula that gets James Robinson more involved on a consistent basis on the ground. It wasn't his best game. I thought the Texans did a pretty good job, all things considered, considering what they're giving up coming in. But mm -hmm. still, and then you get inside the 10-yard line and you take him out of the game for Chris Thompson. And even though Gardner is in that kind of the pistol uh, formation there with Thompson flanked right off his right hip. If you have Robinson there, I think play action has to be respected in that instance. I don't think they're thinking at all that Chris Thompson's going to get the ball on the ground. And Robinson's a fine pass catcher. Now, uh, that's what your, you know, Chris Thompson's specialty is. But Correct. I, I certainly think that, you know, in that circumstance, I want to present the defense with the threat that we can go either way here. We can run the ball with our most effective running back, clearly our most effective running back, or we can throw it, we can spread you out, we can do it in pistol, we can do it in shotgun, we can do it any way you like. I just think it makes it too easy for the defense. It, you basically feel like you know it's coming, and then when you do have him in there, you line him up on the direct snap, as uh, Fred talked about, You know, and they, they must have mentioned on the broadcast we were listening on the – Radio broadcast, didn't hear what the TV guys were saying. You know, Gardner splits out in the formation, Correct. and it almost looks like nobody even paid any attention to it. Go okay, ahead. Go ahead, run? Gardner. Go out there and, and you know, so <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, I don't, I don't hate the idea of going direct snap to either Robinson or Chanel in that circumstance, but the play call, it's just uh, – I, 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 I got to be careful here because I'm the same way with you. I, I've never called a play right. in my life. But, but, but this is our opinion. I, it's a one-yard play. Right. Yeah, one-yard play, and you got a very north-south runner who uh, has excelled all year in getting yards after contact. When there's nothing there, he gets you one. When there's one, he gets you three, right? I mean, so – How many losses has he taken this year? Not many. He had a couple today, but You're not right. before very, today. very, very few. Yeah. And and maybe that factored in too. And look, I get the idea. I do understand the design that it's fourth and one, direct snap. Oh, everyone's thinking that Robinson's going to keep it, and he rolls out to the right. But I almost feel like he telegraphed it. You know, sometimes you can sense when a back isn't really running for it, <laughs> right? And he just kind of coasted out there right. and then tried to – position it so he could get his fingers on the laces or whatever he was doing and then just flat out dropped it on the ground and I I blame 
look, bad execution by him because obviously he fumbled it away. It wouldn't have mattered if he gets, he was going to get stopped behind the line of scrimmage if he couldn't have gotten the pass off. But if the play works, everybody loves it. Oh, but sure, that's one of those sure. that, where it has to work. It has to work. You're fourth and one. This team could not afford to give away opportunities inside the 10-yard line like they did right there. And, uh, you know, you couple that with the two Hauschka missed field goals, and you just felt like the Jags just were not they're they're beating themselves in their own scoring opportunities you know so they, that's a today they were sure. right a potential yeah. 13 points and granted that only gets you to 27 i understand the texans scored 30 but we talked about this a little bit earlier that when if you have those points now all of a sudden you're not down by 13 you're not down by two touchdowns you can different play feel. it a different way you can different stay feel. with the running game you know you, you're not hurry 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 and mm. oh when houston scores or kicks a field goal and you're uh, so deflated because it's back to a two-score game. So, you know, a couple of key, three key plays. Really, those were the the big ones for me. And uh, as you know, we talked about as well um, that when you get turnovers late in the half like that, you gotta you gotta get something out of it. And th- those are tied into the Hauschka missed field goals as well. But it just felt like you went into halftime on such a downer note when you should have been going way up because yeah, your defense was playing as well for a half probably as they played all year. I agree with that. Yeah. And then, they you couldn't know, cash it in on the offensive side. And that. they couldn't hold on. I mean, I, I, I did feel like today the defense, again, you look at the yardage total and you're like, man, it's hard to say that defense played well. But it was like when the dam finally broke, it was over 17 in the fourth quarter. Yeah. You know, you're, you're – shorthanded and some of the guys we talked about the guys getting our player of the game votes today were guys that don't typically play a lot or or certainly not to the degree they did today and uh you know Dakota Allen played well he did I I thought he at least you know I maybe if you go back on the film maybe he missed a few tackles it's possible but he was very active he wasn't what he was last, last week, he was a target. He was a guy that let's right pick on this guy. Right when he came in, we're running at this Right, guy, Sidney man. Jones played like like a guy who was drafted highly <laughs> in the funny. National Football League. He broke up four passes. One of them <laughs> led to uh, that interception by Jared Wilson and Dewan Smoot. I noticed it during the game, so it was nice to see the stats back it up. He looked like the one guy that's like, wow, he's in there again. He's getting some pressure. He, he's hitting Watson, and he got three quarterback hits today. The lone sacks. It wasn't enough, obviously, and there are no moral victories, but uh, you can point out the the handful of bright spots along with the, the mistakes that they made. All right, so we are off and running on the scoreboard show. Bucky Brooks is scheduled to join us as well tonight, and we'll take your calls. We'll start when we come back. 355-NFL1, the number 355-6351. We're here until the top of the hour, until 6 o'clock, on the scoreboard show on Jaguars Radio. Tropical Smoothie Cafe, one taste and you're hitting refresh now, palm trees swaying now, letting loose now, busting a move now, cranking up the beats now, hands in the air now, feeling free now. You're on Tropic Time now. And right now at Tropical Smoothie Cafe, try our watermelon mojito and guava margarita smoothies. And you're tasting fruity now, sipping sunshine now, toasting summer now. You're on Tropic Time now at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. This is Chantel Baker, fiance of DJ Chark. Enter for your chance to win a once in a lifetime experience with the Jaguars. Imagine being selected as a Jaguar for the day with prizes including the opportunity to test your skills with the Jaguars team trainer, personalized Jaguars jersey, club level tickets to a Jaguars home game, and more. Look for details at Publix where you can pick up all your game day needs, including Tide, Bounty, and Crest. Tackle everything in one stop. Available at Publix where shopping is a pleasure. Why live with foot or ankle pain? If you have persistent pain, numbness, tingling, burning pain on the bottom of your foot, or swelling that doesn't improve with home treatment, it may be time to see Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute. Our foot and ankle specialists have innovative new options to help you get back in the swing of things without persistent pain that slows you down. Call JOI 2000 or go to joionline.net for an appointment. 
Hanania Subaru of Orange Park would like to present our new dealership with over 13 acres of vehicles to choose from and our new online buying program, iBuy. You decide how much of your buying experience you do online. Browsing, value your trade, picking your payments, financing. Just go to SubaruofOrangePark.com, pick out your vehicle, and click iBuy to begin. Become an iBuy preferred customer at Hanania Subaru of Orange Park, your local Subaru superstore. Why do you choose Farah and Farah? First, we have the financial resources to take on any insurance company. And our track record proves that we know how to win. Our attorneys and staff are a team, and we've worked together for decades. To us, our job is much more than just a paycheck. We love to help. And this is important. We never forget. It's not about us. It's all about you. Farah and Farah, Jacksonville. Headquartered right here in Jacksonville, the CSI Companies is one of the fastest growing staffing firms in the nation. As a proud partner of your Jacksonville Jaguars, CSI knows how important it is to find the right people for your team. See why some of Jacksonville's top companies choose CSI for their staffing needs. Visit thecsicompanies.com or call 800-582-0828 today. That's 800-582-0828 for the CSI Companies. Jaguar scoreboard show. Scoreboard show continues right now. Welcome in. Phone lines lit up. Three five five NFL one three five five six three five one. JP Shadrick, Mike Dempsey, and we welcome in the third member of our team on the scoreboard show, Mr. Bucky Brooks, joining us from Los Angeles after this thirty to fourteen loss, four in a row. Bucky, what's up? Ooh, tough one. Tough loss, man. Just a just another tough loss and. You know, it's getting to the point where you get really discouraged when you look at what is going on and what's transpiring. You're looking at the quarterback who doesn't appear to have the poise and composure that you want to see in key moments. Uh, you're seeing a team that deviates from the game plan a little bit. Garner Minshew with almost 50 pass attempts, only 20 total rushing attempts, and the Jaguars aren't necessarily built to play that way. And then the repeated red zone woes. Uh, two missed field goals, a fumble in the red zone, uh, then another fumble. It's just really, really hard. When your margin for error is so thin, you have to be able to cash in when you have those scoring opportunities, especially early in the game. Uh, Bucky, what did you make of the fourth down play, the uh, direct snap to James Robinson? Obviously, it looked like he was loading it up to pass, right? Uh, if that play works, okay, you're a genius, but uh, you're shaking your head. I think you felt the same way I did. Why? Well, why, though? Like, why? Like, why? Like, why? Why get cute at that point? It's a yard to go. Let, like, just run a regular play, hand it off to him, run it. If you're going to have someone throw it, let the quarterback throw it. I just don't understand why you're trying to play trick and dick and football at that point. Like, it's a critical point of the game. This is a team that you're facing that didn't have any confidence as well. And so just straightforward, smash mouth, try and run them over. You don't need to get cute because you give them life, you give them energy. They were a team that's struggling, and so you just don't want to give them anything to ignite the flame. Another one, too. I mean, the, a guy who's handled the ball in that situation before is LaVisca Chenault. No doubt. You know, um, yes. not J um, James Robinson hasn't well, – I guess LaVisca hasn't thrown a pass either, come to think of it. I don't but, have an issue if it's a direct snap to James Robinson and pick your hole and yes, go. Right. And you're going yeah. – if that's the way you want to run it. But, yeah, didn't love that. And like you said, the, the missed uh, field goals, Bucky, this, this is a team that cannot – there's no margin for error. Scoring yeah, there's no margin Simply for that, error. right? And, that, and that's at least no, you know 13 yeah. off the board. Right. And for weeks we've been complaining about the defense, and so the first half, maybe the first three quarters of the game, the defense had kind of kept the game under control, and the offense is the one that I would say let us down this week because there were plenty of opportunities to put points on the board, plenty of opportunities to seize control of the game, and for whatever reason, just couldn't get it done. And so it's it's frustrating to watch and it has to be frustrating for the team because um, how many more opportunities are you going to have where you just keep frittering array games? It just makes it really, really uh, discouraging if you're, if you're on that team playing. 
I'm sure it's frustrating for the team, the coaches, but it's also frustrating for the callers waiting on hold. So let's go to the <laughs> phone lines, 355-NFL1, 355-6351. I bet even Bucky could guess who's up first today. Saqib on the south side oh, going to start man. things off here on the scoreboard show. Hello, Saqib. Hey, Bucky. How you doing? What's up, Mike Dempsey? How are you? Man, I don't, you know, get a, I don't get a hello. I, what I know. The, what I, is that? <laughs> what am I, chopped oh, liver? My bad, my bad. I'm just having here, too. I'm just, yeah, you're just a regular guy. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, you're not Bucky Brooks, man. You got that and, right. Uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just so, you know, watching this team every week, and I call you guys, and I complain, and I do all this. But I do this because I really love this team. I want this team to do good. I'm tired of the same thing every week. We can't stop nobody. And then Houston allows 180 yards a game. We only we only ran 80 yards with with this young man. It's just the same thing. It's just crazy penalties. It's just all, all the time. It's something with this team. And I, when is this team going to take responsibility? When is Shad Khan, Tony Khan, Doug Marone, Dave Caldwell going to take responsibility because they're not taking responsibility. They say we have good practice. We have all this. Well, it doesn't translate to wins for us. We haven't won. They need to take responsibility. That's all I'm asking for. Somebody take responsibility, and it starts with Shad Khan because he, I don't think Shad Khan cares one bit. And I know you guys are going to disagree with me about this year. I really don't think he cares one bit about this year. It's all about next year because we have those draft picks and we have $76 million that we can spend. And I'm just tired of losing. I just want this team to finally win and take responsibility, and we're not doing that. That's all I'm asking for. All right, I'll say this. We heard from Shad Khan in the pregame show today. He spoke on Monday for the first time on the record with outside media since, I believe, London last year. And basically, uh, when he was asked about the football team's one and three start at that point, he basically said it's not how you start, it's how you finish. It's a longer-term uh, patience type of approach for him. So I don't think there's anything, um, you know, in the hopper soon, let's say, in terms of change around here. I think he's going to ride this thing out. And I think he's thinking it's a younger football team that in time with games played – can become a little bit better, Bucky. Yeah. Is that is that even is that possible for this group? Can, they can improve, right? I mean, that's a, that's allowed, I mean, they, right? Yeah, they they can improve. Um, and I, I will say this: um, Shotgun has been patient beyond what I could ever imagine an owner being patient. When you look at just the tenure um, and, and what has transpired, the amount of double-digit lost seasons and those things—a little flash where the the Jaguars are able to get to the championship game, but man. A lot of losing, and it does become very discouraging, not only to uh, the people inside the building, uh, coaches, players, staffers, uh, the fan base gets increasingly frustrated. And so you do just wonder what is going to be the turnaround? Where do you kind of cling to the hope and the optimism? And so you would like to see something happen in terms of just better performance, a win here or there, um, more consistent play, because it's really hard because everyone is kind of looking for, okay, here's the sliver of hope. This is going to help us get to the to the next level. And we just haven't seen that in the last few weeks. So it does become very discouraging. And I will say this, too. I think that once Shad Khan goes into a season, he treats it kind of as its own thing right there. All right. He considered whatever changes he was going to make or not make. Then he goes into this year and he's going to judge this over the course of a season. But I think it's fair for Jaguar fans to say, look, we've sat through the last 32 games coming into this year. You won 11 of them. And. So it, it's not uh, – to us, this is not a matter of you're showing patience through a month. You've showed patience through nearly two and a half seasons now of substandard football, and so I think that's where the frustration comes in uh, because I agree with you, JP. Based on what Mr. Khan said earlier this week, I don't anticipate any no. kind of moves, any major moves being made at least for a while until we're uh, pretty deep into this year, if at all. He's process-based, and he lets the process play out. And the, you may not agree with the process, but – and I think it's a lot of fans process. don't. Well, and, and, that, and he is entitled to make it his process, but I think fans are entitled to feel however they want about that, right? Because the, the process has resulted in losing seasons in every year but one uh, right. under his uh, tutelage, his Correct. ownership. So that that's where we're at right now. All right, let's come back. We'll take a timeout. We'll get to more of your calls. We've got uh, three more segments ahead of your calls at 355-NFL1. 
855-6351. J.P. Shadrick, Mike Dempsey, and Bucky Brooks on the School Board Show on Jaguars Radio. Ugh, I have to do laundry when I get home. I have to lug all my clothes over to the washing machine. Then I get to put them in the dryer and accidentally shrink my cashmere sweater again. (laughs) Motorcycles make everything exciting. And when GEICO makes it easy to switch and save on motorcycle insurance, it's even more exciting. I'm going to fold all my socks into little balls. Yeah! GEICO Motorcycle. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. I'm Chantel Baker, fiancé of DJ Chark. My fiancé is always prepared with a game day plan, and so am I. I'm always looking for easy ways to save time, and Publix helps me tackle everything from pre-game prep to post-game cleanup with prices that are never out of bounds. This week at Publix, get a $1 off Crest Gum Detoxify 4.1-ounce toothpaste and look for new Tide Hygienic Laundry Detergent. Available at Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. Why is the new Sleep Number 360 Smart Bed your answer to better health and wellness? It's proven quality sleep. Any more questions? Yes, I'm always freezing, and he overheats. It's temperature balancing, so you can sleep better together. But can it help keep us asleep? It senses your movements and automatically adjusts to keep you effortlessly comfortable. So I'll have more energy for yoga. Yes, proven quality sleep is life-changing sleep. Namaste. Namaste to you, too. Now save up to $700 on select new Sleep Number 360 Smart Beds, plus free premium delivery when you add a base. Ends Monday. To learn more, go to sleepnumber.com. This football season, prepare your taste buds for the most iconic sports-watching drink of all time, Pepsi. With refreshing deliciousness specially formulated to keep your eye on the ball and mouth-watering fizziness to help you power through game day, Pepsi has everything you need to start strong. I used to care when Mike chaired so hard he spilt nacho cheese on my carpet, but thanks to Pepsi, even Mike can't ruin my football party. (sighs) So this football season, make Pepsi your go-to game day drink because it's the only drink made for football watching. Pepsi, that's what I like. Brooks Rehabilitation Outpatient Locations throughout Florida are currently open and accepting in-person and telehealth appointments. They're following CDC guidelines to include screenings, temperature checks, face masks, social distancing, and additional sanitizing of all surfaces. They're taking extra precautions to ensure your safety so you can focus on your recovery. Please call their central intake unit at 904-345-7277, option 3, to schedule your visit. Brooks Rehabilitation is the official rehabilitation provider for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hey Jacksonville, this is Joe Adib from Bono's. I just want to let you know that we have now reopened all of our dining rooms. We appreciate all the love that you have showed us during this crisis. For over 71 years, we have been here for you through good times and bad. Our award-winning barbecue and our unbelievable staff look forward to seeing you soon. Be safe. Jaguar Scoreboard Show. Scoreboard Show continues right now. Welcome back, Scoreboard Show. We'll get to your calls. 355 NFL 1, 355 6351. JP Shadrick, Mike Dempsey, and Bucky Brooks. And uh, Jeff Schultz of The Athletic covering the Falcons has tweeted about 45 minutes ago The Falcons' firing of Dan Quinn has been all but finalized, and an announcement could come Monday or Tuesday, a source told. The Athletic, the Falcons 0-5 for the first time since 1997. Ooh. Hey, Bucky, uh, what do you think? Did Was there any impact this week, in your opinion? I know it's impossible to know for sure, but uh, the Bill O'Brien firing, uh, maybe just to get rid of some bad blood, Romeo Cornell coming in. Did you notice any kind of bump uh, from that for Houston, or was that just you know something that happened? No, they definitely play with more energy, and we talked about that during the week. Normally, when you have a firing, uh, the immediate the game – right afterwards, you see a little more juice from the team just because it's almost like the Wicked Witch is dead. Like, here we go. This is what we wanted. And because of the personality that Bill O'Brien is, I think he kind of lightened the mood a little bit uh, in Houston. And then I think from an offensive and defensive standpoint, it appeared offensively they did more things that were built towards Deshaun Watson, a lot of quick rhythm passing game, um, things that we watched him do uh, at Clemson. And then defensively, Romeo Cornell uh, was just there. It was still Anthony Weaver calling. But I think you could see a little difference in the way that they played defensively. And so, yeah, I think it mattered 
uh, a lot. Now, I don't know if they can sustain it, but for a week or two, yeah, it certainly was a positive for them. I'm just curious, yeah, you know, because sure. it seems imminent, uh, like you said, Dan Quinn's going to be gone. We'll see if the uh, same happens with the 0-5 Falcons, and uh, that's where things stand at the moment. Uh, let's go back out to the lines at 355-NFL1. Thomas on the south side next up here. Thomas, you're on with Bucky Brooks. Go ahead. I got a uh, question for you guys. If a season ticket Jaguar holder gave you season tickets to go to the Jaguar game and paid you, would you guys go? I would go. Well, I get paid to be here yeah. anyway. So. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the answer is yes for me. Yeah. Bucky? I mean, I would go. I would go. I would go. They're, they're serving concessions, right? Like, if they're serving concessions, I can get it. We're getting get paid. We're, we're getting free <laughs> yeah. tickets and paid to be here. As so. Chuck, Chuck Thompson yeah. used to say, ain't the beer cold. Yes. <laughs> Look, I, I I understand your point, Thomas. It's not you know like it's it's disappointing, man. You you don't want to watch uh, your team lose every week and give up thirty every week, but that's that's the state of the team right now. Yeah, I think a lot of people would take you up on that offer, though. So yeah, and I, and I know it's hard because you know they they've lost a ton. Um, we've lost a handful in a row, and man, the weeks weeks get longer and longer when you lose these games. So at some point, something has to crack. Yeah, no doubt. All right, Thomas, uh, better times ahead. Let's hope. Let's go across the pond to the U.K. Christoph oh, wow. checking in with Bucky Brooks. Hello, Christoph. Hey, Mike. Hey, JP. Hey, Bucky. How's things? Oh, it's been You'd better. Be better. You're winning. <laughs> right. <laughs> 34 and 94 since 2012. We've lost the last three games to teams without wins, and next week we play Matt Stafford and the Lions. Oh, joy. Will Shot Khan be the fastest owner in NFL history to reach 100, win- 100 losses before he makes 100 wins? Wow. And I mean, that's, that's all I've got to say. I have no, I have no idea what, uh, who holds that mark, but it uh, seems like he's making a run at it right now. So, What else you got, Stav? Why does this team crush our hearts every weekend? <laughs> wow. Um it's a fair uh, question. Yes, it I, is. I think, okay, so I think, I think this, this year going in, I think from a philosophical standpoint, um, Dave Caldwell, Doug Marone wanted to clean up the locker room. They wanted to get the right guys in there. Um, by all accounts, they have guys that have exemplary football character. They're trying hard. They're playing hard. They're doing those kinds of things. But right now, when you have a very, very young team, you have to teach them how to win. And what you hope that you're able to do is win a couple that you're not supposed to while you're showing those guys how the preparation and – the stuff on the practice field and how it all marries and carries over. Right now, the habits haven't necessarily been formed where they're able to play winning football. From the quarterback to the way the defense plays, they still just have to continue to put good things on tape and really kind of focus on the process. But right now, it's very frustrating to go through the process because the team just quite hasn't found their formula, their recipe to win games in a consistent manner. The upcoming opposing quarterbacks. You ready for this? Stafford mm. next week. And then the game now week seven was week eight. Uh, Justin Herbert and the Chargers. Then the bye week. Who's thrown for 300 every week. He right has. Now. Yes, he has. Uh, and then the Texans again to Sean Watson. And then at Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers. He's good. And then home against the Steelers, Ben Roethlisberger. Oh, and by the way, Cleveland's leading today. They might be 4-1 and one after this day is over. <laughs> Uh, and then you got Minnesota, and then Tennessee comes, uh, or you go to Tennessee, so, or uh, they come here rather. And then you got the Ravens, and then Nick Foles comes to town, and then it's the Colts. So, but the uh, the next month, <laughs> the next six weeks are, are really high, high, uh, highly see, thought of quarterbacks, right? See, I, I think you have to break it up into small chunks. I think we have to focus on the little ones that are right in front of us. Um, right, Detroit. Detroit should be another one that y- you at least feel it should be an even Steven game. Uh, they're not world beaters either. And so you're hoping that uh, you can find a way to get get a win against a team that has also struggled getting wins. But at some point, these games that we are kind of chalking up to either being even or ones that maybe we had, or maybe I had penciled in, like, well, maybe we can win that one. Uh, you got to have some of those go your way, especially if you're trying to build confidence and build momentum as you're trying to reset the program. Th- these are things where Doug Marone has to figure out a way. They got to figure out a way to win with what they have. And so that's, I mean, that's on the coaches. That's on the personnel staff. They have to figure out a way to, to find a way to get it done. And the way that the defense is playing, JP, I, I don't know if there are five quarterbacks you could name that I'd feel good about facing. 
truly, oh, that, yeah. that start in the <laughs> NFL. Right. I mean, look, Ryan Fitzpatrick had a huge day against him. I mean, he's having a great day, by the way, against San Francisco mm -hmm. uh, today. They're up 30-7 to seven at the half. Uh, but, Whew. you know, that that's the NFL, man, Bucky. They're, they're coming at you. Uh, with record-setting point totals every week for the first four weeks of this season, uh, record-setting completion percentages, quarterback ratings. It's, you know, you better like offense because that's the style of play right now in the NFL. You know, Mike, it's funny that you bring that up because I did see the note uh, coming out about scoring being up, penalties being down. The league has made it very offense-friendly. And so the thing about that is you have to understand it's almost like watching an arena ball game. Uh, watching the old arena ball, you're hoping to get two or three stops a game and your offense is working at such an efficient rate that you're able to win those games. The problem right now in the last couple of weeks with the offense, we haven't seen the offense operate at the same clip that we saw at the first couple of games where they were moving the ball up and down the field. They were scoring points. Now we're getting an occasional stop or two from the defense, but the offense isn't as consistent when it comes to putting it on the board. Some of that can be due to the kicker, but the offense has to be the thing that shows up each and every week. And you just hope that you can get uh, a play or two from the defense that gives you an opportunity to win a shootout. And right now the offense isn't efficient enough for the Jaguars to win. Yeah, they got a couple tip balls today, a couple interceptions, but uh, no points off those turnovers today. Let's uh, come back in a moment. More of your calls, 355-NFL-1, 355-6351. It's the Scoreboard Show on Jaguars Radio. If something's been hurting, aching, or bothering you, don't ignore it any longer. It's time to take care of your health again. It's time to make an appointment with a Baptist Health primary care doctor or specialist. Call 904-202-4U to schedule a virtual visit or see a doctor in person at a Baptist Health location. The time for better health is here. Call 904-202-4YOU or visit GetBetterJacks.com. For over 20 years, TIAA Bankfield has teamed up with Siemens to provide a next-level game day experience for Jaguars fans. From lighting, safety systems, and keeping our fans cool to helping power up our massive video boards, Siemens solutions ensure our venue stays in peak condition. Now with their powerful cloud-based software solution, MindSphere, sensors in our field monitor moisture, fertilization, and temperature data to get to the root of the problem before they become real problems for our turf. Just like our team, we're working together to unlock our potential and get the win. Siemens, ingenuity for life. Hi, this is Dr. Patrick Basil of Basil Plastic Surgery and Wellness. I'm a proud veteran of the U.S. Navy, and during my active duty time, I had the amazing privilege to serve our country and those who were wounded in combat. Helping my patients return to a normal life, I was able to provide an unparalleled level of care, which I've carried over to my own private practice today. As the official plastic surgeon of the Jaguars, I invite you to visit us at patrickbasilmd.com I would like to wish the Jags best of luck in today's game. This is Chantel Baker, fiance of DJ Chark. Enter for your chance to win a once-in-a-lifetime experience with the Jaguars. Imagine being selected as a Jaguar for the day with prizes including the opportunity to test your skills with the Jaguars team trainer, personalized Jaguars jersey, club-level tickets to a Jaguars home game, and more. Look for details at Publix where you can pick up all your game day needs, including Tide, Bounty, and Crest. Tackle everything in one stop. Available at Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. Headquartered right here in Jacksonville, the CSI Companies is one of the fastest growing staffing firms in the nation. As a proud partner of your Jacksonville Jaguars, CSI knows how important it is to find the right people for your team. See why some of Jacksonville's top companies choose CSI for their staffing needs. Visit thecsicompanies.com or call 800-582-0828 today. That's 800-582-0828 for the CSI companies. Proven IT implements a strategic game plan designed to streamline your business for maximum results. Make the winning choice with the official business systems partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, Proven IT. Proven IT's technology experts use a customized approach to understand how to design, implement, and monitor solutions that optimize your business. Proven IT provides managed network services, document management solutions, office technology, voice and data solutions, and more. Visit ProvenIT.com to see how they can streamline your business. Proven IT, transforming workplace productivity. The Jaguars scoreboard show. Scoreboard show continues right now. Phone lines lit up. 
People fired up after this one. Jags dropped their fourth consecutive game. One and four record now after a loss to the Texans. 30 to 24, J.P. Shadrick, Mike Dempsey, and Bucky Brooks. Let's get to it, Mike. Let's get to it. 355 NFL 1. Ronald on the north side. You're next up on the scoreboard show with Bucky Brooks. Go ahead, Ronald. Hey, how you guys doing? Doing uh, okay. I think if anyone is being realistic, I mean, going into the year, uh, with how the roster was turned over, there's no real veteran leadership. There's a bunch of young guys. I mean, who's expecting us to be anything but 1-4 or 0-5? I mean, those, I didn't have any high expectations. I mean, I think we all know what the year was going to be like. I, I was more disappointed in the owner when he retained the regime and didn't address the fans as to why. It, it makes me think he cares about his bottom line and not really winning. I mean, I guess we got choir boys, good character people. But the wins and losses, I think it's going to stay the same. We may get two or three wins this year, and then what's he going to do? All right. Thanks for the call. Appreciate it, Bucky. What, I mean, this is going to be, this is going to be, I think, a, a tone of a lot of these calls tonight. It feels like. Yeah, no. I mean, I, look, man, you can't dispute the record is what the record is. Dave Caldwell's record speaks for itself. Like there haven't been a lot of uh, successful moments or uh, tremendous highs. Um, a few years ago, the team went to the AFC Championship game, but now you have to tear it down and you're trying to build it back up. Going into the year, you knew potentially it could be a tough year with so many young guys having to play prominent roles. You didn't have an offseason. You didn't have a preseason. You didn't have a training camp to really develop those guys, but neither did anybody else. And so um, I think what you're trying to do, if you're Doug Marone, you're trying to keep it together and just find a way to win a handful of games, not even because of the fans, but you're trying to keep your team hopeful and optimistic because what happens is the team is looking to him, and they're looking for him to be the, the problem solver. And if they ever lose belief in his ability to solve problems, then the team goes by the wayside. So he has to be able to come up with a plan at some point where they can win games. And so the team can still hang on his every word and have a lot of confidence that he knows what he's doing when it comes to putting out a winning product each and every week. And Bucky, to Ronald's point, uh, I don't think he's wrong that probably a lot of people, if they'd looked at the schedule, they would have said maybe one and four. But I feel that the way it, has played out is the disappointing mm -hmm. thing where you win the first one. You're so competitive with Tennessee who's yet to lose still. And that was on the road. And then you're like, wow, okay. You know what? Maybe we're going to be surprised. And you kind of got your hopes up and the games, if you were thinking they're going to be one and four, two and three, it was Miami and Cincinnati were the ones you think you could get. You don't get them. And then you look up and Houston's winless. And so, you know, it, it's almost like, it's a complete reversal of how you expected it to get to this point, even if you did expect the record to not be so good. Well, absolutely. I mean, I think if we were just doing how we would play the game on paper, you would say that realistically, you expect that the Jaguars, based on each week, they should either be two and three or three and two. Like that would be the mindset because you would think that Miami, Cincinnati, and a winless Houston team, those would be games that you could snatch and get. And they haven't been able to do it. So now you're off the mark. And you look down the schedule without looking too far ahead, you're wondering, well, where are the other wins going to come? Like, when are they going to be in a position to reel off a handful of wins? Because you know how it goes, man. You, the, the wheels fall off the wagon real quick. You go from one and four to one and seven, one and eight, then your team won't play hard. And so then you're looking at two and 14 or whatever the record may be at the end. Oh, we know. Bucky, we, we've, seen, <laughs> we've, we've seen this story before. You're going to tell us. What do you got, Mike? Yeah. Uh, do we, is that Next call. We got any calls? Not, no, not okay. at the moment. Okay, let's come back in a moment. We'll, uh, we'll get one final segment in. Plenty more ahead with uh, Mike Dempsey and Bucky Brooks. I'm J.P. Shadrick. Phone lines are open, 355-NFL1. We're here until the top of the hour on the scoreboard show on Jaguars Radio. Brooks Rehabilitation outpatient locations throughout Florida are currently open and accepting in-person and telehealth appointments. They're following CDC guidelines to include screenings, temperature checks, face masks, social distancing, and additional sanitizing of all surfaces. They're taking extra precautions to ensure your safety so you can focus on your recovery. Please call their central intake unit at 904-345-7277, option 3, to schedule your visit. Brooks Rehabilitation is the official rehabilitation provider for the Jacksonville Jaguars. 
Hanania Subaru of Orange Park would like to present our new dealership with over 13 acres of vehicles to choose from and our new online buying program, iBuy. You decide how much of your buying experience you do online. Browsing, value your trade, picking your payments, financing. Just go to SubaruofOrangePark.com, pick out your vehicle, and click iBuy to begin. Become an iBuy preferred customer at Hanania Subaru of Orange Park, your local Subaru superstore. Jaguars fans, here's a great way to pay with pride wherever you go. Exclusively from TIAA Bank, the Jacksonville Jaguars Visa Debit Card comes with a fierce look and fantastic features, along with the convenience to make purchases online or at millions of locations worldwide. And it's yours, free, when you open a Yield Pledge checking account. Order yours today. Visit TIAABank.com slash JagsCard. TIAA Bank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC, and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Why live with foot or ankle pain? If you have persistent pain, numbness, tingling, burning pain on the bottom of your foot, or swelling that doesn't improve with home treatment, it may be time to see Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute. Our foot and ankle specialists have innovative new options to help you get back in the swing of things without persistent pain that slows you down. Call JOI 2000 or go to joionline.net for an appointment. You won't find a better deal to keep your ride clean than Scrubble's Flexible Service Car Wash. Start in the tunnel wash and experience state-of-the-art equipment while enjoying a soapy light show. Our quality soaps and solutions keep your vehicle streak-free. Every three-minute car wash package comes with self-serve vacuuming, lint-free towels, window cleaner, and a free air freshener. Visit us at the St. John's Town Center, Fleming Island, and Atlantic Beach. And coming soon to Kernan in Atlantic. Trust the bow tie. You'll know quality once you arrive. Go Jags! DreamFinders Homes has a simple commitment to their home buyers. Deliver unsurpassed quality, uncompromising value, and an extraordinary level of customization you simply won't find with other home builders. With over 40 communities to choose from, you'll find a location you love and the home of your dreams. DreamFinders has townhomes, single-family homes, and custom estate homes starting from the high 100s and a wide selection of move-in ready homes. Quality, value, customization, that's the DreamFinders difference. Call 904-738-0165 or online at DreamFindersHomes.com. DreamFinders Homes, the official home builder of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Prices subject to change without notice equal housing opportunity the jaguar scoreboard show scoreboard show continues right now welcome in final moments of the scoreboard show J.P. Shadrick, Mike Dempsey, Bucky Brooks from Los Angeles. Uh, nobody said it was going to be easy. I'll say that. And if they did, they were wrong. They were really wrong. <laughs> they were just so wrong. <laughs> weren't even close. Oh, man. Yeah. Ooh, Bucky. Right, Bucky, what do you what do? You do? Uh, you're, Doug Marone says, Bucky Brooks, I need you to come in here and talk for five or ten minutes to this team. What What, what was the message as a former player who's been through some ups and downs that uh, you would try to impart to this team? Uh, I would tell the team more games are lost than won and that before you can win games, you got to clean up the things that don't take any talent. So you can control um, how you prepare. You can control the pre-snap penalties. You can control the hustle and the effort. Um, in reasonable fashion, you can control ball security. And so if you can do those things, that'll put you in a position where most of the games will go down to the fourth quarter. Um, I think you really have to hammer with the team. Hey, let's make sure that we're prepared each time. Let's bring the energy and let's make the other team work to beat us. If you can get to the point where you don't beat yourself, then you have an opportunity to win. And I think when we look at each of these games, we can pull out a handful of plays where um, it had little to do with the other team and more to do with things that we have done on our end that have prevented us from winning games. You know, Doug Marone said, guys, that he, he's not worried about this team, Bucky. Like, he's not worried about them giving up, not having that fight. Did you see that energy today? You know, I, I think for me it's tough sometimes. I hate to try to guess and judge that from a TV screen. But you're a former player. What did you see out there in that department? No, no I, I, think, I think the team plays hard. I think the team plays hard. I think you, you have a handful of examples of guys that are making big plays. LaVisca Chenault continues to grow up in front of our eyes. Um we saw the, the defense giving effort and, and trying hard and doing those things. Sometimes they're overmatched. Uh, Brandon Cooks had a big day uh, going against Claybrooks. Like, they were trying to match up their guys. Like, Claybrooks was playing him, and he's just not ready to be a guy that can 
match up with a player like Brandon Cooks. And so you give up some plays and you do those things. Um, I think the thing that is maybe encouraging is they don't back down. They don't blink. They don't necessarily fall apart. The one player, though, that I do believe that we have to monitor, um, we got to continue to look at the quarterback because the quarterback appears to begin to want to bail out of the pocket or he makes things a little chaotic and frenetic before it really breaks down. And to me, that's just a sign of a lack of poise and maybe a little bit of a lack of confidence. And he's also, in the last two to three weeks, he has missed more opportunities than he was missing early in the year. There are a couple of shot plays where you only get a handful of them to make plays, and he hasn't made those plays. And so when we talk about the, when we talk about the difference between good and great, that's the difference. And so if he is being evaluated this year, I think you have to look at him right now and just put a huge question mark because I don't know, I don't know what his ceiling is right now based on how he's played and seemingly unraveled the last couple of weeks. Well, today they had the the one to Conley, right? Was the deep ball underthrow? Yeah, yeah. I mean that 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 should have been six. Yeah, walking in uh, yeah. with six, and he very fortunate that it got out there. But you know, they made the play, but. You know, that, I think that's what Bucky's talking about. The March for error. Okay, it's that's great right. that you completed that pass, but that should be an easy <laughs> touchdown. Yeah, I think that's the difference. Like, the, the difference is, and I, I'm not going to put him in the category with the Aaron Rodgers or whatever, but the great ones. The great ones, if you, if you give them a lottery ticket, they cash it in every time. If you blow a coverage against Aaron Rodgers and Pat Mahomes and those guys, they find it, they nail it, and they make you pay. Garner Minshew has to make the defense play for when they mess up. And we haven't gotten to the point where he's making them pay enough where they back off and they change the way they play. And so, you know, sometimes it can come with maturation, but I mean, we're beginning to get up there. It takes about 30 games to evaluate where your quarterback is. Um, You want to see him kind of take it up a notch. All right. Next week, Bucky, the Detroit Lions come to town. Matthew Stafford and all the rest. What kind of team can the Jaguars expect to see next week? So the the challenge in playing the Detroit Lions will be offensively. Offensively, they're going to test from a defense standpoint. They want to play man to man. And so can the receivers on the outside win? They don't believe in bringing a lot of pressure. They're not a really blitz heavy team to try and do it with the four man rush. But can the guys on the outside win against their corners? And can Garner Minshew, if the initial receiver or the second option, if they're taken, does he have enough patience to find a third one or will he run around and force himself into harm's way? And then offensively, it's kind of a throwback offense. They found Adrian Peterson. He's reunited with his old offensive coordinator, Daryl Belville. They're giving him the ball like his Adrian Peterson 2010, and he is running the heck out of it um, as an older runner. And so... It'll be an old-school smash-mouth game, but this should be a game that when they look at the tape, the Jaguars should go into the game feeling like this is a game that they can win. This feels like the on the on you were talking about the defense. Oh, they All they do is play man. They play man. They play man. Didn't the Dolphins all they do is play man until they played the Jags? And then they played zone. And, and they, they played zone right. all. And they, and they switched it up on a short week, too, and when you had no time right. to put in any zone busters. And I, one thing, I just hope C.J. Henderson is not only active, but I hope he's as – you know, healthy as can be. Jeffrey Akuda, C.J. Henderson, let's see him head-to-head, right? I know they don't sure. play against each other, but yeah. those were the top two cornerbacks in this draft on the field uh, together, or at least sharing a field next week. Yeah, no, that, that's the thing you want to see. The other thing you want to see for Jackson, you want to see their top four defenders were out this game. So you had the three that didn't, Henderson, Miles Jack, Allen, and then Josh Jones goes to the locker room early after that targeting call and the ejection. So you play without four of your top defenders, and – Look, it was a respectable job based on what they had available to them. And so if they can come back to full strength, will the unit play better? Uh, we didn't see as many blown assignments, but can the unit play better if you have your more talented guys on the field? That would be the challenge. That would be what we'll have opportunity to see next week. Bucky, always appreciate the uh, time we get to spend with you, and we'll do it again on Wednesday on Happy Hour. How about it? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it, JP. Good seeing you, Mike. Sounds good. All right, Bucky, uh, Bucky Brooks out of here from Los Angeles. Mike, we've uh, we've made it another post game show. Yes, yes, we have, and apparently uh, we'll do for the next two weeks as well. At least for now. <laughs> all right, that's right. I, I, don't don't <laughs> pencil it all in, JP. <laughs> You're right, right now. We, Use pencil. We believe Detroit and Jacksonville will go head to head right here next Sunday. As of today, yes, yes that is happening. <laughs> all right, our thanks to our entire crew um, for Bucky Brooks, Mike Dempsey. I'm JP Shadrick. 
Jags fall today. Final score, Texans 30, Jaguars 14, and it's the scoreboard show on Jaguars Radio. <laughs>